Hi everybody, um, I finally got round to doing this week's vlog challenge, um, which is a bit tardy of me considering it's uh, mine and Nikki's project in the first place, but um, the theme, even though I knew what it would be, um, completely stumped me for some reason, and the theme is books. Um, I was trying to be clever and just think of um, perhaps a different way of sort of addressing the theme um, but in the end I just scrapped that all and just thought about what my favourite books um, were and are. Um, bearing in mind I did a degree in um, American and English literature um, not long ago but actually none of the books I'm going to talk about um, were from there as great as they are. I think when you kind of feel forced to read books it's often difficult to take sort of great pleasure in them because you're looking at them from a certain angle um, like an academic angle rather than just for pleasure so I thought about what books I've loved in my uh, 21 years and the first one I remembered was The Secret Garden oops sorry let me to jog you uh, The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett I think her name was her could be a could be a fella I'm pretty sure it's a woman um, and this was a book I always um, kind of turn to I don't know if you know the story but it's about a young 10 year old girl who's rich and spoilt by her wealthy parents um, they live in she's an English girl living in India and then uh, cholera kind of wipes out her whole family and leaves her unable to use her legs and she gets shipped back to Yorkshire where she lives with some random uncle, I think, as they tend to do. Um, and it's just the story, really, about how she starts to go outside and finds this secret garden. Um, but it's a garden she's not allowed to go into because it belonged to her late, sorry, her uncle's late wife. Um, but obviously she finds the key and goes in there and kind of brings it back to life. Um, she ends up finding some random kid that lives in another bedroom because she hears this weird crying every night. Um, and they become friends and he gets better as well. I've given the story away now. Um, and it probably sounds really kind of tame, um, bearing in mind what some children's books are like these days, but... Um, I don't know, I don't know why it kind of sort of stuck with me, but it's just a beautiful story. Um, so yeah, so perhaps particularly if you've got young girls, they might really like it. I don't think books like that ever go out of fashion. Anyway, moving on, um, the next book I thought of was another book that just really stayed with me that I keep going back to and that's called Perfume by Richard Suskind. Um, it's a German book, obviously it, I read the translated version, I think it was published, God, a long time ago, about 85 now. Um, and it's set in kind of 14th century France, I think, um, and focuses on this guy called in fact, it's not 14th century France, I meant 18th century, obviously. Um, Jean-Baptiste Grenouille. Um, the weird thing is, he's born with no body smell. Um, and he ends up as like an apprentice to the town's uh, perfumi perfumier. <laughs> perfumier? I think that's how you say it. Um, it does go really dark and... Um, I won't spoil it, but I think just with the book, the way the kind of sense of smell uh, was kind of weaved in and out throughout the story just really brought um, where he was living to life, you know, this kind of, it was a real slum, you know, people doing all sorts of, in the gutter and whatnot, um, and as I say, it does go really, really weird and dark, which is probably why it appeals, um, and of course they made a film of it, uh, which was horrendous, um, and I think anyone that would have watched that would never have realised what a fantastic book it was. Um, yeah, so I love that, I think that was awesome. Um, I think the final book I'm going to mention today is 
uh, a book called The Book Thief and um, that's by an Australian guy I believe called Marcus Suzak and um, it just chronicles the story of this um, young German girl living in Nazi Germany with her foster parents um, but the unique thing about it is it's actually narrated by death as in the person death um, and they, the, the family end up um, sort of looking after this Jewish guy um, in the basement of their house and protecting him from um, the Nazis. And it's just kind of interwoven with um, her learning to read and words and a love of books. And that just kind of really, I really felt that on a weird deep inside level, <laughs> don't know what I'm talking about. But if you've ever kind of read a book where, you know, it's really spoken to you, you'll know what I mean. I do get a bit weird about books. Um, so that's it really, they're kind of my three all time favorite books. Um, there are kind of loads of special mentions to, you know, The Time Traveller's Wife and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and even the Harry Potter books. Um, you know, they've just made, um, a real kind of impact on my life to the point where like I say I studied them for four years um yeah so that's it I won't bore you too much longer um thanks for watching um and if you like please press like and subscribe and I'll see you for my vlog challenge which I think is week four um, next week so that's me Kate over and out for now bye Everyone, um, I wanted to talk to you about. I don't know. Um, okay.